Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It looks like things are popping off in the Real Housewives of Potomac. This past episode, Giselle was the one to drop the tea about the salacious rumor going on about Monique and her relationship, which forced Monique to go live and expose the plot going on behind the scenes that nobody knew about. This caused Robin Dixon to do an interview, so we're going to discuss that and how she tried to clear her name and being involved in the plot. So stay tuned and get into the juice. I keep it juicy, juicy. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel, your girl G here. And I just did this uh, marriage boot camp review, and I was like, shit, something just popped up on my freaking timeline, the headlines. And I was like, let me hurry up and do an episode of Daily Squeeze because I really haven't been able to do one in a minute. Um, so yeah, we need to sit down and have some conversation because apparently an interview just came out with Robin from Real Housewives of Potomac trying to plead her innocence and all of this, you know, stuff that's been going on. If you haven't heard about it, you know, with the secret plot against Monique, we about to get into it, you guys. So y'all sit back. You know what it is. I ain't got no juice right now because I wasn't planning on doing an episode of Daily Squeeze, but it's okay. If you got your cup, your drink, whatever, go ahead, sip uh, while we sit back and talk about, you know, Real High Souls of Potomac. And if we have time, I might throw a little bit of other stuff in there, you know, from, you know, a couple of things I missed in the past. All right. So... Real House of the Potomac, let's just get into what the story that it started with. So basically, we all know in this last episode, Monique had been trying not to say anything about what happened with Sharice and the rumors that were spread. She was like, I'm not talking about, but of course, Giselle's messy ass decided, oh, Monique, you know, it's rumored that her, that she was out with her trainer and, you know, Big Boy found out, you know, she always could have loved Conqueror's Big Boy. And, you know, it pop is, you know, apparently, you know, it's ruining the relationship. Okay. So then from seeing that, I guess that prompted Candace to do a live. Now, if you haven't seen the live, I only watched like a little bit of it. Um, basically, Candace admitted to there being some type of dinner, some little get together after Andy's baby shower. It was her robin giselle and if i'm not mistaken karen was there or she heard about it or somebody informed karen of you know the dinner and basically it was this plot that had came about from a ex-friend of monique's i think her name is Gigi, which pisses me off because girl you're making Gigi's look bad hey gonna go do some phony shit like that i would never i would never ever do that to my friend bitch i'm loyal as they come girl monique kick that bitch and, like find her in the street somewhere she need to get got for trying to do this messy shit that you that she doing right now okay we'll get to that part but nonetheless um in this part of the story um the dinner happened and the original story came from the friend the ex-friend Gigi, that oh you know, the uh, Chase is not Chris's baby. It's the trainer's baby. Some shit like that. But Candace and her live said, no, that's not going to work because Chase looks just like Chris. Nobody's not going to believe that's not his baby. So then the story shifted from that to, oh, hey, Monique has been out seen in the streets with her trainer and, you know, possibly cheating on Chris. Now, with that being said, um, Monique ends up doing a live and that prompts her to do the whole full story, which started with her ex friend. Now, Monique explains this friend of hers or ex friend of hers, this raggedy, dirty ass, punk ass bitch that's going around trying to shop basically to get on the show. She contacted producers, was saying a whole bunch of messy shit like, oh, she didn't have no miscarriage. She had an abortion. Everybody knows that she put her legs up, you know, to have that baby just like she put her legs up to get rid of it, like some foul shit. And then was talking about how, oh, you know, it, you know, Chase is and Chris's baby. That's what she was telling the producers. Luckily, they didn't buy into something that messy. I'm glad that Bravo didn't do that because that just would have been really fucked up because like they, Chris and Monique said, bringing children into it to an extent like that and ruining a family over rumors like that, like, that's really fucked up. Especially over something that's not factual with any proof. That is literally pure messy bullshit. Um, so, since she couldn't get no bite from the producers, of course, she's gonna start hitting up the people that are enemies of Monique. And that started with, you know, her reaching out to Candace, I guess, and asking for Sharice's number. 
We all know Sharice and Monique fell out after that whole shindig with Kendall and both of them not really taking, kind of blaming the other for, you know, the messy plot uh, to bring Kendall on to piss off Giselle, uh, which we're going to get into, you know, a little bit of that. Um, but Sharice and her, I guess, ended up talking and Candace admitted to talking on the phone with the ex-best friend or ex-friend of Monique's for like a couple of hours. So now Candace knows about all of this stuff. Sharice knows about this whole elaborate plan. And then a girl apparently started talking to Giselle. So I think after all of them getting in contact with this girl, I'm sure ended up having that dinner and, you know, probably passing around stories of what that girl was trying to bring to the table. She so badly was trying to find her in on the show and she knew it could either be Sharice or Candace because they were fighting with Monique at the time. And we all know Giselle ain't never liked uh, Monique ever since she told her she had four homes. That bitch has been salty, okay? Club crackers, saltine crackers. Giselle been hella pressed, Panini, uh, over Monique. And I don't know why. Um, So, Monique literally went in on these hoes. Like, you know, I tried to be professional. She's like, nobody knows that I've been dealing with this shit for like the past year. Because a lot of people were questioning, why did you sit down with Giselle? And she's like, first of all, it's that money. Let me show up and get my coin. Ain't no bitch gonna keep me from my bag. And secondly, I was being professional. And, you know, to show these hoes, because, you know, Giselle kept trying to paint Monique. They all kept trying to paint Monique like this, like, basically this this ratchet scallywag. Like, ooh, look how she acts, because we all know she damn near choked Robin out with an umbrella. Um, and, you know, I, drag me, bitch. And she like, bitch, I'll drag you. And they're very, Giselle especially is very good with trying to paint Monique like, you know, the ratchet bit, bitch from the hood, don't know how to act, ain't got no home training. I personally don't think that. If some if somebody want to have a fight, it depends on how the situation happens. Um, if it's just like some ratchet shit. But I don't get that vibe from Monique. I get the vibe from Monique like, okay, I'm clatchy. I'm classy. You know, I hold my shit together. But up under here, bitch, don't push it. That's what I get from Monique. But, you know, she was basically explaining like to know, you know, that Candace had this dinner with the girls and didn't even come tell me like it's so fucking foul Karen actually was the one to end up telling Monique about you know the rumors that were going around she was like oh my god I can't believe they would say such a thing about you and Monique's like what do you mean and she was like Karen told her like did Candace not say anything and she's like no Candace didn't even tell Monique so y'all made up and now here you are plotting behind her back admitting to basically revising the story that was trying y'all were trying to you know put out there because of her her ex-friend um so now Monique is like the only reason Candace told me is because I confronted her about it because she asked her okay what the hell were you bitches saying and that's the only reason why Candace you know even mentioned anything to her over the phone so I found it hella funny in that interview though when Chris started going off he said, y'all some low down dirty bitches. He said, y'all lucky I ain't Bruce Jenner because I would have whooped all y'all asses. I don't give a damn about Giselle. We already know she don't like, you know, our family. She's rude as fuck. But for the fact that y'all came after my kids, to come up with something as asinine as somebody's child is not theirs, like, you bitches are really pushing it. Um, And y'all don't understand how that really could have snowballed into something hella, like, foul, like, hella bad. Um... But Chris went in on them hoes. He was not playing. He said, I would have dog watch y'all bitches if I was if I was a woman. Um, he's like, you know, Monique can handle that thing, but it couldn't have been me. Y'all would all would have got beat up, and I felt the same as that way. J Monique kept her cool sitting down with Giselle at that table. But after that scene would have got done, I would have caught that bitch in the parking lot. Point blank, period. Um, so for Candace not to tell Monique that all this shit is happening, clearly... Candace is still feeling some type of way, even though they made up. Now, Candace right now is in a lot of hot water. Uh, let's just go ahead and talk about that. Some old tweets popped up about her. And, you know, they were kind of, kind of coming off a little ignorant, a little disrespectful. Talking about, oh, you know, I don't mind people being gay, but why do men out here want to be like women? 
and you know I got a co-worker and I don't know if he's like that but I'm pretty sure he's gay um another one was like oh queenie gays I can't stand them uh you know the one the men who want to be like queens they're so extra now that one it ain't that bad I'm sorry I don't think it's home like homophobic or nothing to say you know queenie men can be annoying because sometimes y'all can be period it ain't got nothing to do with y'all sexuality got everything to do with y'all's attitude y'all be extra as fuck and then the type of attitude that y'all be having the way y'all don't mind going for bitches jugulars the, the way some of y'all can it's a bit merch all right but nonetheless now candace has got herself in a lot of hot water because on top of that she said some more foul stuff about monique and was talking out of both sides of her neck. Um, I ended up watching Justin Sky. If y'all don't know him, go check out his channel. He be giving all the lowdown with uh, Real Housewives of Potomac. But in one aspect of Candace's live, she said, which is now deleted, she was like, oh my God, Monique, you know, she's just so mental. She thinks she's so important for people to talk about her. Why does she think everybody's involved, wants to know about her life? Nobody gives a damn about you. Why does she even think that people were trying to plot on her? She's not that important. But then two seconds before that, you literally admitted to, oh, you know, all the women were at the table, you know, bring up how, oh, you know, uh, she was cheating with this, this trainer. It's like Candace, like you're, this is why you always get in hot water because you talk out of both sides of your neck and you do some foul shit and then you want to throw the rock hot the hand. That's not how it works. Um, so, uh. Then somewhere uh, later on her interview, she said some more shit like, oh, um, Monique, she's she's mental. She's ill. I don't even know like what's going on in her life. She needs to understand. So I don't even know how God created something like that. Why didn't even she even get a chance to raise a baby? No baby. She'd be raised by her. Like she was going in. And sometimes Candace has the ability to say some foul ass shit. And I think she gets that from her mama because we see the way her mama talks. We saw the way her mama was like coming for her throat when she, heard, she found out the dad was coming to the wedding. So Candace, I think too, has a lot of hurt. She has a lot of built up anger from her mom and she takes that out and becomes super dangerous with her mouth um, when it comes to attacking people. And she justifies it by, oh, they came for me first. And that's not how that kind of, like, yeah, somebody comes at you, like you have the right to defend yourself, but sometimes it's not she always finds it necessary to throw the whole goddamn coliseum when somebody throws a pebble like sometimes you ain't got to be that damn foul candace and so now she's catching a lot of flack a lot of shit is adding up for people you know a lot of people already didn't fuck with her because of last year with that ashley shit um with the whole michael situation because she was going hella in and that monique called her out on it and that's another reason why they kind of fell out um Candace does not know when to stop. Um, so then Robin, let's get to Robin. After that whole scandal, Robin has an interview yesterday with Bossip, if I'm not mistaken. And here she is trying to basically cover her tracks and it, the shit's not adding up. So she does the interview and was like, oh my God. Cause she made, she made an Instagram post saying, oh, y'all need to leave me out of it. You know, people are lying on my name. There was never no plot. That's some, that's a lie. And um, y'all need to keep me out of it. But you were at the dinner though. You were at the dinner. That's a fact. Like people said you were there. Through two or three people said you were there, Robin. So she even said that, yes, they all sat down and talked. On one part, it's like, oh, I don't even remember. You know, I, I heard Instagram post. I don't even remember what was said. So can't nobody put nothing. I can't put nothing out there because I don't even remember the night. But then she's doing in the interview and she was like, um, nothing like, yeah, oh, we were all talking about it because it was already a rumor. It was already out there. Everybody, it wasn't like somebody brought it to the table or, you know, somebody just made it up. It was something that was already out there. Okay. So if it was something that was already out there for one, you know, we're talking about it. You remember that much. You remember that it was a rumor and it was already out there, but then you don't remember the whole conversation that was at the table, Robin. What Robin is doing right now is basically trying to cover her traps with her tracks without incriminating her, Giselle, and the rest of the girls. You lying, Robin. You caught red-handed. And the problem is you're trying to 
play semantics and you know play word games with oh it wasn't no plot it wasn't no plot you know she's making it seem so salacious and making it seem like oh we all were trying to come after monique but if all of y'all are sitting at the table talking about this rumor that's what you said that is you know it, it ain't got to be no plot the point is y'all were talking about it the point is, it was a rumor, and if somebody brings it up, that's some messy ass shit, and it's intentional to bring it up. She said, and nobody had to make it apply. If somebody just wanted to bring it up, they could. And of course, it was Giselle's messy ass that brought it up. Robin's not going to be the one to do it. She's just not that bold. And out of the two, Giselle is always the one. She's the head of the snake, period, point blank, and Giselle is the tail. She follows Giselle, as much as she wants to say that she's not, she does. She always does. You might not have been the leader, but you are an accessory to the mess. Because you sat down at the table, you knew what was happening. You didn't check your friend. You didn't try to warn Monique. You didn't, you know, try to tell the other bitches not to, to stop doing that because that's a bad look. Nothing. You sat there in complacency, so you were just as guilty. And Robin knows that. You think because you weren't the one that said anything or you weren't the one that, you know, didn't spread it around that you're not guilty? No, you are, Robin. You're just as fucking messy as them. And Giselle has this issue with... Uh, I can't stand Giselle and I can't stand Robin for doing this interview and really trying to do word games and play on people's intelligence. Like, for one, the dinner happens. Facts, okay? For two, you clearly brought the, the topic of Monique and her trainer and rumor about the baby and her sleeping around on Chris came up. That's fact, okay? So you can't move and wiggle and finagle your way around that, period. You were there, that conversation came up and for you to sit there to sit there and say, oh, I don't remember. Clearly you do, bitch, because you remember enough to say, oh, it was just conversation. Bitch, please. Um, you see her friend ain't been saying nothing. Giselle been quiet. And the problem is Giselle is doing the right thing by, you know, not saying nothing, but by Robin going out there and trying to cover her ass, that leaves room for it to seem like, oh, I, nothing happened at the table like that. It's almost like Robin's trying to do the covering for both of them. Like she's not trying to say, well, if I didn't say it, somebody else at the table did. So she's not saying who else at the table was talking the shit. But she knows she said enough to know that, oh, that's not how it was. That's not how things not how things happen. But Candace said she was there. You were there too, Robin. So is Candace lying about that? And then she sat there and said in an interview, I haven't talked to Candace. I don't know what I don't know why she said that. Why haven't you called her then? If the shit is a lie, you could have confronted her. But she can't confront her because she knows the shit is the truth. Um, and Robin, ain't nobody buying the bullshit, okay? If y'all haven't seen the interview, I think it's on Bossip's Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. Or you can just go to Justin Sky's uh, YouTube channel and you can kind of see a little bit of a clip of it there. But overall, all them bitches are messy and need they asses whooped. Especially Giselle. Giselle has run across her match. Candace is getting her karma right now as we speak. And I'm interested to see what you guys think. Do you guys believe Robin? Do you feel like, oh, it was just rumors everybody was talking about? Or do you feel like she was very much aware of this plan? Because it definitely was a plan. Because how is it that Candace was intuitive enough to be like, oh, that's not going to work because Chase looks just like Chris. That wouldn't have came up if... There wasn't some type of conversation in how they're going to work this story in. She knew to be like, oh, that's stepping over the line. That's a little bit too much. So clearly there was some type of plan for somebody to bring it up. All right, Robin, we ain't fucking stupid. Quit playing with us. The viewers are not stupid and we are starting to fall off of this train, especially of Giselle with this pretty green eyed, light skin. I get away with shit because I'm pretty bitch attitude i just can't stand people like that and for giselle to constantly always be pointing the finger at monique like she's some ratchet asshole because she fought candace and oh you know we've done our best you know to make sure we we're above the standard but you're just if, if anything you ask me giselle's worse off than, than monique 
because I don't like the fact that because somebody got physical, that makes them, oh, a bad example. Because I'm going to always raise my child to not play no motherfucking games. If somebody come at you, disrespect you, you better hold your own. Drop down in the comments if you agree. Do you feel like because you, because you get physical with somebody that that makes you a bad example? I don't. I feel like it's more of a worse example for to sit there and watch your mom be messy, stir the pot, put lies out there in the streets and be complacent and ruining a family possibly like messing up somebody's relationship. Um, like Chris said, dog wipe that hoe. Dog, every time I saw, every time I was seen Giselle, Monique should have bopped her ass, should have molly whopped her, took her goddamn green eyes out. If you ask me, Giselle is one of those people who has gotten away with so much shit in her life. Her life because she's been pretty and and bats her eyes. It was who me? Oh, it wasn't me. I never did such a thing. And because her personality is so kind of you know infectious, it covers up the bullshit that she be playing. You know, in the back of the, of the in the background, basically. Um, and she has this way of getting people to vibe to be around her and be around her and Robin and be in the group. And that's how we saw Candace act. We saw when Ashley came on, that's what she did. She was the outsider and was trying so hard to be friends with Giselle and Robin. And then we see Candace come on and here she is. She's sitting down with Giselle and Robin. And now y'all plotting behind Monique's back. Like, what the fuck? And then Karen and Monique did a live and Karen basically confirms like, yes, this is what happened. I was told... You know, Robin was there, Giselle was there, and they was coming for your ass, boo-boo. And it's just disappointing because, like, are y'all really doing this, y'all grown-ass bitches? Giselle, this is why no man wants your funky ass. Because you might be pretty on the outside, but that inside is real dark, dirty, and Ursula-looking. Like, you need some real work and figure out why it's, it seems like when you're intimidated by somebody you try to chop them off at the knees. Like, that's not cute at all. It is not cute. Tell me what y'all feel about this. Do you, um, uh, people are saying that this is Candace's last season. She's not trying to film with Monique. Um, well, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, because obviously because of the fight. And then Candace, you dirty too, because I guess it came out that Candace, uh, wasn't going the criminal case route in regards to the fight with her and Monique. She's trying to do a, a civil suit. And we all know a civil suit means money, means that guap, okay? She's trying to get that coin. And she knows she can't do a criminal thing because she was antagonizing and just as involved in that fight. And you can't go to court and say, oh, she beat me up when you was the one running after that bitch and talking mess. Like, you can't do that. You are, you are what they say, you know, you're just as involved in the fight. So now she's trying to do a civil suit and basically get Monique to settle for some money because she's trying to purchase that damn $2 million house because her mama, she can't ask her mama to pay for the shit. You're trying to live that high life and you're trying to get it off of Monique's back even after you done did some dirty shit to her. Ooh, Candace, I swear. You and Giselle pissed me off. And then Robin, you just pissed me off after I watched that interview you trying to play in my intelligence and dance around it. Because they asked. You just got to straight up ask, did the dinner happen or not? Yes or no, period. And if it's a yes, which we all know it's a yes, then it is who brought the conversation? Who was it? So I'm interested to see how more this is going to play out, you guys. Um, do you feel like this is cause for some of the ladies, you know, to start turning on each other? Who is going to be the first to really break and be like, look, this is who brought it up. This is who was the who was going to, you know, bring everything out. I mean, Candace kind of, you know, blurted out everything, but she ain't really like, you know, give full, full details into how, who verbatim did what and who came to who and all that type of stuff like that. I'm trying to see who's going to crack. And everybody needs to get on Robin ass because that interview was straight poochie garbage and I ain't buying a bitch. Um, what does this mean for Real Housewives of Potomac though? I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Little quick episode of Daily Squeeze. Had to come and talk to you hoes about Real Housewives of Potomac. Them bitches got me hot low key. Let me go in there and give me another cool drink. Drink me you know, one of these Smirnoffs. You know, light me a little incense. Little incense. <laughs> so I can, you know, get my nerves that calm, cool, and collected. Okay, these bitches done got me hot. Because if I was Monique, like Chris said, dog walk all you bitches on site. I don't fight. I don't, uh, 
argue. I just hit that bitch with a bottle. I hit that bitch with a bottle. What? All right, let me quit. Um, bitch, yeah, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I did the review for Marriage Boot Camp. So if you haven't checked that out, it should be posted right now. Um, and if any more information comes out, I will definitely be filling you guys in, okay? Before you go, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Deuces.